This is the Atlantic Wall. On March 23, 1942, Hitler issued Fuhrer Directive No. 40, which put into motion the construction of a series of defenses that stretched for 2,000 miles along the Atlantic coastline. The plan called for the construction of 15,000 concrete emplacements. The fortresses, strong points, and resistance nests were further reinforced by tank traps and obstacles such as hedgehogs, Belgian gates, and log ramps. What was arguably the most dangerous for the soldiers attacking on D-Day were the mines. In northern France alone, over four million mines had been laid under the leadership of General Rommel. If the Allies were to have any hope for success on D-Day, these obstacles and mines would have to be cleared, and carrying out that dangerous task would go to the engineers. We're at the Easy Red Sector of Omaha Beach. And with us, we have a one-of-a-kind relic from one of these engineers who, on June 6, 1944, played an integral role in helping to crack Hitler's Atlantic Wall. Standing on the easy red section of Omaha Beach, where on June 6, 1944, Sergeant Montague of the 37th Combat Engineers carried this very book. This is the original S2 book from that unit. And basically, it is a blow by blow from the time they left England on their journey to Normandy up until several weeks into the Normandy campaign. It's, it's got a, an amazing amount of information in it. And basically he writes a timeline of what the 37th Combat Engineers were doing, blow by blow, in Normandy on D-Day. So we wanted to take a, a moment to read a section out of this D-Day diary. And this particular entry was made at 1220 on June 6, 1944. And it says, Strong points to the left and right of Easy Red Neutralized have been dug in on the dune line all morning. 88 fire continues on the beach. Dang. <laughs> this whole thing is just an absolute gold mine of information about what happened on D-Day and in the days after. So this S2 journal is covered with plastic and I, and I assume Sergeant Montague did that to protect it because he knew he would be doing a beach landing. This third guy from the left is Sergeant Montague. I wanted to point him out in, in this photograph that we have. But some, some of you might not know what, the S, what S2 means in military term, and basically it's intelligence gathering. So they would, they would record movements, what's happening blow by blow, um, you know, reports of mines in their case, and, and um, booby traps or whatever, because that, that would be the, the job of the, of the combat engineers. And you know, a lot of people don't give the combat engineers enough credit. I mean, they landed right with the initial forces and they were in harm's way, but their job was to try to neutralize mines and booby traps and obstacles on this beach. And um, this, this S2 journal would have been what he had in his pocket and he would record things as they happened. And then later on, they would create and after action report and other documents that would go into the official record but for whatever reason at the at the end of the day he ended up keeping this because all that information would have been transferred and gone to his officers an s2 section would have both officers and enlisted men and you know small tasks like recording things like this on the front line would go to someone like a sergeant you know and then eventually it would go to an officer who would record that in after action reports. So I'm going to read another passage from the June 6th sec section where it says, uh, attempting to get into position 
beach was held by t two strong points, 100 to 200 yards inland, firing machine guns and 88 millimeters. Beach was crowded with first in waves, all seeking cover at low bank. 88 millimeter shells were registering on SP and tanks killing large numbers of personnel. Captain Cox and Captain Parkerbrod were killed by 88 fire. Colonel Smith worked up the beach towards E3 landing and was on easy red at E1 and was killed by a mortar shell. And it goes on and it, it's, it's just an incredible blow by blow here. Um, there, there's stuff about the pillboxes in here and um, more about mortar fire and securing the beach. All right, one more quick entry that I want to read here. Uh, now, just because D-Day had come to an end on the evening of June 6th didn't mean that the danger was, you know, gone uh, here in this area. Look at this. Here's an entry from D plus nine, and this is at, at 1400, and it says two cows killed Easy Red Beach wandering in minefield. So the, the, the danger was not gone uh, even over a week after uh, the, the landings. Uh, it wasn't safe here not only for the people but, but for the animals either. My gosh. All right, well, that was an S2 diary that uh, has been brought back to the place where it was filled out right here on the Easy Red sector of Omaha Beach. To, to come to these places and experience the history is, is uh, impactful enough, but to, to be here with a historic artifact that, that actually originated right here in this area uh, definitely adds a new dimension. Very, very cool.